A lot of people listening might not be familiar with DMT and exactly what it is. Uh, could you refresh everyone what what is DMT in your mind and sure. and what got you so fascinated with it that you wanted to spend so much of your time making this film to, to share with the world? Sure. Um, well, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, very simple compound that comes from tryptophan. A lot of people are familiar with that from Thanksgiving dinner or turkey, and they're like, oh, tryptophan, yes. But it's a simple, you know, simple amino acid, um, basic kind of building block of life, and potentially every living organism has DMT or has the ability to make DMT. Now, that gets into some interesting philosophical questions. Why is it everywhere, and is there this kind of base communication that can happen amongst living organisms? So, yeah, it's all over nature. Plants, animals, ourselves, um, and then also now in this new psychedelic ecology where people are experiencing these very mystical experiences. And that's really what got me into this. Um, I had never heard of DMT. This was in 2002 when I first had my, my, my first experience. I had heard and tried just about everything else under the sun prior to that. And the gentleman that brought the DMT, where there was a small gathering, uh, nobody else had heard about it. It was just this one guy, and it was kind of like, this is a special experience, and he did a beautiful job facilitating. Um, we went one at a time, he set up a beautiful space, and I had a pure death experience. And he said he had never seen a look of fear on somebody's face that he had for the first minute um, of my experience, and I was completely frightened. Um, I did feel like I was dying, and then after about a minute, settled into the most beautiful experience of my life. And, and was just literally swimming with it. My arms were kind of up in the air, moving around. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about sure. that, like step by step, what happened? So you, how did you <laughs> take the DMT? The <laughs> yeah. this was Give in a us the, version. let us know how it happened. Sure, sure. Yeah. This was in a smokable version, um, three inhalations roughly. And within that, well, right after the, the second one, started to really see the room morph and change. And, and that's really alarming when it happens that quick. Um, it's one thing when you have an LSD or a mushroom experience that tends to 30 minutes or an hour where you can kind of ease into it. Uh, you don't have that opportunity with DMT. It's, it's there, it's quick. And once I started to feel that, I was able to take another inhalation and I was, I was blowing that one out. I don't remember what exactly happened next because it happened so quick. There was a lot of information and things just flooding my mind. I felt like I was traveling, um, down a wormhole or there was something about movement. You know, I was, I was moving, um, and I didn't know how else to describe that except for kind of through space and time and other dimensions because it was so overwhelming and there was so much stuff happening. Uh, I even remember having a, a thought that, oh my gosh, you know, my parents are gonna have to find out about this and you know, how, how bad is this gonna be as, I, as I'm dying? Um, but then came to that, uh, popped out in this space. This large dome space. This is a pretty common experience. I think that people have a lot of bright geometric patterns that are moving and morphing extremely quick. And out in the distance, uh, at this macro level, this uh, describer is a cat woman, um, and it was just the face. And as soon as I recognized that, that face out there, it shot forward in a split second, and it was right in front of my face at this kind of micro level. And it was this play back and forth. As soon as I saw it at the micro, it was jumping back out to the macro, and it was just back and forth. And that's about all I remember from the experience. Um, the most profound part about it, though, is coming back. Um, the second I came back, I knew I was going to make a documentary about it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was the spirit molecule. But I was just like, what the hell is this about? <laughs> and why are people not talking about this? Yeah. Um, and then the other really profound thing that happened on that first experience was I had had a lot of otherworldly experiences throughout my life since I was a kid, some of my earliest memories, um, traveling to other dimensions, um, encountering entities. And a lot of times that's going to get you sent to a psychiatrist. And, and it did in a lot of ways. And I learned how to shut up about that and not talk about those experiences. And was this when but, you were sleeping or just in the waking state or, or just throughout your childhood? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, sometimes wide awake, sometimes kind of in between that, that sleep paralysis state where you're somewhat awake, but not really awake. Mm -hmm. um, uh, dream states that were kind of realer than real. But the second coming back from that, that first DMT experience, all of those things were, all the anxiety around those w was gone. Uh, and it felt okay that this was part of the human experience and that there is nothing wrong with, with having these experiences. And so it, it relieved me a lot um, of stress and anxiety from those experiences. Um, mm -hmm. It allowed me to just accept them. 
So that is kind of what got me on the path. And I didn't want to touch psychedelics or didn't want to touch DMT again until I knew more about it. So I spent about four years, you know, diving into whatever I could find out there. A lot of that was, was Terrence's work and then happened across Dr. Strassman's work. And Mm -hmm. that was, as soon as I read the book, I knew that that was the way to tell the story, that this was, you have your science, your spirituality, it's going to have some recognition for those that are kind of outside of this realm, but can say, okay, well, this was at a recognized university with a psychiatrist and, um, individuals that were participating in the study were lawyers and doctors and your normal, normal day-to-day people. 